another episode of Blooms for You. Cartwheels around the patio. Woohoo! <laughs> One of my favorite. I love doing these so much because, you know, when a bud appears, I go to my list, I check the name, and then I go, okay, the universe wants you to be matched with you. And well, here we are. I have myself some more blooms that have opened up and people to thank. And look at this. <laughs> Okay, as we are a little bit further away, Hibiki is looking so, so good, but Hibiki is starting to lose some blooms. However, it's the circle of life. I've already seen four more new growths coming up on Hibiki, so do what you gotta do, boo, and bring on those new growths so that they can bloom in the season of 2024. And I am not misspeaking, because all the growths that you see now that haven't bloomed, they will bloom for us in 2023. And then Orchid Ninjas, check out Lady Chatterley. I brought her out together with Hibiki to say thank you so much to you for your support on my channel. I've still got myself some smiley faces, although some of the blooms from the previous episode have dropped off. I still have two more buds to go, so at least Lady Chatterley is still smiling away in my blooming alley. Thank you to you, Orchid Ninjas, for your support on my channel. While she's in bloom, I will feature her every single time. Becoming an Orchid Ninja is easy. Just join the membership of my channel and boom! You will be labeled Orchid Ninja from there on in. Get yourself a pretty little Dendrobium Berry Odor Bloom to start with a mug to create your own blooming alley within your cupboards for every six months of your subscription as an orchid ninja. And then I have plans that at this point I can't realize for more intense content on the orchid ninja side of YouTube as opposed to the public side. I am not there yet, but your vote of confidence if you decide to become an orchid ninja is also very much appreciated. So to everybody that is already an Orchid Ninja, thank you so, so much for jumping on board so soon on my channel. I so appreciate you. Somewhat of a long intro, but Orchid Ninjas deserve to be recognized in my opinion. Anyway, there are timestamps in the description, so there's that. However, I would also like to recognize everybody that's watching this video and say thank you to you for clicking on it by dedicating my Dendrobium Hibiki to you as she blooms and blooms and blooms because not everybody clearly is going to be mentioned in this episode. So while I don't get to your name, Dendrobium Hibiki blooms for you to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. Know that you are appreciated. And if I don't see you, I can't add you to the list. So I encourage you to leave me a comment. If I see the new name, boom, on the list it goes. And eventually there will be a match made by the universe as to which orchid bloom will be dedicated to you somewhere down the line. These things do take time, but somewhere down the line there will be a bloom. I can assure you of that. Now, for orientation purposes, I am now in March of 2022. There's a lot of names between March 2022 to present day, but you can see I'm working through it. We are getting there. And speaking of getting there, you're probably wondering when is she going to get to the point? Right now. So let's go and have a look-see as to which blooms feature in this episode and whose names came up. One bloom, one very special bloom for a very special Orchid Ninja. Welcome, Andibaldo, to the Orchid Ninjas. I so appreciate that you decided to go and check out what's going on behind the scenes. Once the opportunity poses itself, the Orchid Ninja content will take priority as opposed to the public side of YouTube. But for now, I so appreciate your vote of confidence, Andibaldo. Thank you so much. Welcome, Orchid Ninja and Sun. Speaking of that single bloom that is dedicated to you, this is Lelia Amethyst, and oh my goodness, <laughs> it has taken me four years to get this orchid to bloom. I thought I was purchasing a near blooming size orchid, and I also thought I had plenty of light, so what is taking this orchid so long? Turns out it was probably just a, you know, out of seedling stage, juvenile kind of phase when I got it, and here we are. I know that this orchid can do so much more. It is capable of producing multiple blooms on a single spike. I am not going to be greedy. The fact that I've got it to bloom, <laughs> happy days. 
I have to say that I am pretty impressed with the bloom. No, it's not wilted. I wouldn't do that to you, Anne Sun. One of the parents is Brassavola cuculata, and if you know Brassavola cuculata blooms, they're creamy and they're extremely floppy when it comes to petals and sepals, and they're also much bigger. So the cuculata parent provides this floppy look. But the purpurata parent brings the color, and whoever thought of that combination, well, <laughs> they did a great job. I would say their predictions came out pretty well. Now, having cuculata as her parent, she should be highly fragrant. Being a first-time bloomer, I am being denied that fragrance for now. I feel as though I should be smelling a hint of the purpurata cuculata mix. I am not entirely sure because my blooming alley is relatively crowded with highly fragrant orchids, so I move her away from the blooming alley to see if there is a fragrance, and I would be lying to you if I told you, yes, I detect something. Maybe my brain is playing tricks on me because I know cuculata and purpurata are highly fragrant, so I am assuming I'm getting something akin to rose fragrance, but I'm not going to state that as a fact here and now. Hopefully, if she's around next year, she will grace us with more blooms, and then in her second blooming, I can see if her fragrance comes forth. But I can tell you, I love this bloom. Of course, what takes center stage, the showpiece of this bloom, is this remarkably shaped lip. I am so glad that the cuculata parent stayed strong and provided this arrowhead spear-shaped lip very unique, not something that I have in my collection. We normally see trumpets and ruffles and all that wonderful stuff, so this bloom is definitely a unique one in my collection. Dare I say she has a satiny sparkle as well? Well, a little bit. It's a kind of overcast day and also a little bit breezy, uh, again, as you can see, but there is a little bit of a reflection on the petals and sepals when the sun shines on her, but it is not as brilliant and as sparkly as I would have thought. Cuculata being nocturnally fragrant, I was also thinking at night, maybe I should go check out that fragrance at night. Like I said, I would be lying if I said to you, yeah, she's got a nocturnal fragrance. It should be highly fragrant, considering that both parents are fragrant, and it should be fragrant all the way late afternoon into the evening, because both parents, you know, purpurata fragrant during the day, cuculata fragrant at night, this should be quite the stunner. I cannot wait to see what 2023 brings, and I'm really hoping, like I said, that she will pull through. I should have addressed this orchid this season in 2022 with a repot, a root ball cleanup. I didn't get around to it. It is one of those broken pots that I was trying to target throughout the 22 season. We didn't get around to it, but you know what? I wonder if I had repotted her if we had had her bloom. So in a way, I'm glad it didn't happen. Now I'm just going to have to really tide her over through the winter so that I don't lose what I consider finicky brassavola roots that have a mind of their own. I am banking on the strength of the purpurata roots for the winter 22-23. <laughs> Orchid Ninja and Sun, once again, thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I love seeing how the little emojis change from month to month when your name pops up in my comments. I chose the first months of the emojis myself from the blooms in my collection, and eventually there is the final Orchid Ninja logo that will then appear next to your name. The one that you see in the videos when I address Orchid Ninjas or present Lady Chatterley to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. Eventually that will pop up next to your name. Your vote of confidence is appreciated. My first time bloomer, Lelia Amethyst, blooms for you, Orchid Ninja and Sun. Ooh, I was so hoping that I could make this a double bloom dedication for Judy Goodson. This is my Brassavola flageralis, and yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> The blooms didn't sink and line up in their bloomings. It would have been a first time to have this orchid in bloom with two blooms on the go at the same time. Ha! Huh, giving me another sign. She is maturing and getting stronger to be able to do this. But we have our second bloom. That has never happened with this orchid either. So, yay! 
she is still getting stronger and maturing. And thank you so much, Judy Goodson, for your support on my channel. Brasavola flagellaris blooms for you. I do have a little bit of an update to give on this orchid though, because you can see how red her leaves are in the background of the blooms. It makes for the best photography of this bloom that I've ever had. Having an overcast day adds to that. Unfortunately, we lose the sparkle, the pixie dust, all that effect on the petals and sepals. But my goodness, can we see how crisp and clean that lip is. It's like white linen, I love it and her fragrance at night, everything is going according to plan. And what I want to do during this dedication is show what she should have looked like for you by adding the bloom where it should be on the spike that is left behind without one. It is that time of year that the angle of the sun has dropped so low that this orchid is now exposed to sun as from about 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And boy, is that sun strong, even though the temperatures are cooler because the atmosphere is so much cleaner, which has me concerned that this is a little bit too much for this orchid. I appreciate the contrast it is giving me for photography reasons, but the health of the orchid is also paramount. Now I had a little bit of a job to get her off her summer perch to move her into a bright shade location where no sun will reach her because one root decided to go rogue up and into the iron grating that is the gate. <laughs> and yeah, well, you know, breasts of all the roots are precious, especially the new ones. They don't absorb water until next year. So <clears throat> I had quite the challenge getting that root off without breaking it. Thankfully, though, the root tip had already gone dormant and we could get it off without a problem. And now it just looks a little bit kinked. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's no shame in a kink. <laughs> but yeah, this orchid at night, I have the terrace door open still and I can smell her gorgeous lemon scented sugar powdery fragrance all the way into where I am sat planning my next day's YouTube schedule. This bloom has now been open in approximately four or five days. She's already starting another new growth off a lead that has not bloomed for me yet. So maybe next year we can kind of sink three blooms in one go. Wouldn't that be awesome? But to see that other new growth already starting, that is kind of unusual, but I'll take it. It makes me happy that this orchid came through a nasty winter spring of 21-22 and did what she did, progressed the way she did this year. And now I'm just hoping we can repeat the same for the winter of 22 and 23. So Judy Goodson, thank you so very much for your support on my channel. My single but double bloom, <laughs> cheating, <laughs> Brasovola flageralis, she blooms for you. Thank you for being here. Lelia Perinii, ta-da! Thank you very much, Jerry Gottheil, for your support on my channel. One name, two blooms, because the other bloom is not as perfect as I would like it to be. There appears to be some bug damage or humidity, lack thereof damage, I don't know. But it's a shame that the petal here has some sort of damage. It's not bug damage, thank goodness, because I have been scrutinizing these bugs the moment they started to form just because I absolutely love the way they are shaped. They come out and they remind me of a flamingo beak and then that beautiful, rich, royal purple lip starts to protrude. So while these buds were forming, I was scrutinizing them every single day and I didn't see any bugs. My guess is that there is very low humidity at the moment when they were forming and for that reason, one of them doesn't look as nice, but Jerry Gottheil, hey, we've got ourselves a Lelia perinii, a beautiful splash of color which the petals and sepals are true in the viewfinder, but that deep, rich, royal purple doesn't exactly come through. I tried to take some stills to get the image and the impression and the color right. I'm not sure how exact I got to the color that I'm actually seeing, but it is remarkable in contrast with how the lip is so white as it curls around the column. I took a picture of how the curling just wraps around the column, which is detached from the lip until it meets the 
the area where the petals and sepals are connected. It's a remarkable bloom. And the white is so pristine, clean white. It actually glows from within. On an overcast day like this, she does not exude her fragrance. But if there is a little bit of sun on her, she smells gorgeous like a very elegant rose. Singular rose <laughs> because it's not a strong fragrance but it is very very appealing and you have to actually really get into the bloom with your nose to appreciate it even on a sunny day meanwhile right now blooming next to the maxima i can assure you the maxima is taking over because she has six blooms but still this orchid being a species i have to say she is the one species that i have that is so predictable the only thing I'm not able to achieve is to get her growths in my care to grow to the size that I got her with. There's a marginal staggering of the growths decreasing <laughs> while she's been in my care with the exception of one. We must have had a very nice hot summer at that time because this orchid literally sits on my shelf occupying real estate that I actually don't have indoors from the moment she finishes blooming, which will be in about eight days because her blooms only last 10 to 11 days and does absolutely nothing in quotes until about January when the growth that she's blooming from now produces roots. And let me tell you, it's not like yay new roots, gung ho, uh-uh. Those roots grow so slow, but at least they're growing. And then while the roots are growing, emphasis on my slow speech because it takes up until the end of May, beginning of June for her to start a new growth. That is the growth habit of this Lelia perinii. And you know what? Sometimes I'm so over this orchid and then you see her in bloom. And it's like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> I have her at a little bit of an angle because the color of the pink of the petals and sepals is true in the viewfinder like this. You can see that she literally points upwards. I should have my camera higher looking down to give you a better angle, but I am hoping that all the b-roll footage and the stills will give you a good impression of the blooms. But yeah, she is truly a space hog and sometimes I'm like, oh, this orchid. <laughs> And then she does this and it's like, oh, this orchid. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you imagine? Yes, I'm taking my time because like I said, these blooms are gonna be gone. Once I thought I'm gonna get these blooms to last two weeks, Nope, 11 days. <laughs> so while she's still around and before I just talk here for another eight days, let me once more thank you, Jerry Gottheil, for your support of my channel. I so appreciate it. I hope you're doing well in your part of the world. Before I get carried away, and completely lose the plot and distracted by the fragrance of this Neo Stylist Lucneri, let me say thank you to Liris Robles, Kit Rivers, Sanatorium Asylum, Jeff Ramers, Roby Robinson, and Sharmista Mukherjee. Okay, deep breath. I don't mind taking deep breaths around this orchid. Oh my goodness, the fragrance is insanely gorgeous. I've got hints of lemon, hints of vanilla, and I've got that powdered sugar coming through as well. I can take a deep breath and inhale it. I am so sorry I can't share it with you by telling you which app to download and then press XYZ option feature to get that fragrance coming through your device. Lemon, vanilla, citrusy, powdery, cream, very obvious in the air. Oh my goodness, even while the sun isn't shining. Well, it's sort of shining, but you know, sometimes we say an orchid needs to have sun shining in order for it to actually have a fragrance. Not so with Lucneri, because of its very strong, highly fragrant parents, the Rhynchostylus gigantea and the Neophenicia falcata. Both of them super fragrant, just so happens the falcata is nicely fragrant at night, meaning 
The Neo Stylus Lusneri is fragrant day and night. Of course, it peters out a little bit more towards late evening, whereas that is when the Neo would be at its finest. But my goodness, to have a fragrant orchid all times of the day and not, well, you have to go visit it at 4 p.m. to enjoy the fragrance. Nope, not so with Neo Stylus Lusneri. So a massive thank you. With my third spike, on this Neo Stylus for the season of 2022, first of all, again, but I, you can see I'm getting distracted because of what I want to talk about. So anyway, Liris Robles, Kit Rivers, Sanatorium Asylum, Jeff Reimers, Roby Robinson, and Sharmista Mukherjee. This is a very, very happy spike for me because, yes, as with all my orchids, they had a lot to deal with in the spring of 2022. Low light levels being one of them. Now, not just for the fragrance sake, but because of light, we also say if an orchid isn't blooming or isn't blooming correctly, give her more light and she will bloom. I did not have that opportunity <laughs> this spring and I was a little bit freaked out. The positive side to having all this happening in spring is that we are in October and I have Neo Stylus in bloom with a fresh spike, not one that is just going over. So I'm getting to enjoy these blooms a lot longer because the temperatures are milder and they are strong enough because of the Rinko Stylus Gigantea to withstand these nasty winds that I've been having recently. And I said third spike, yes, but this is the second spike on the main fan. I had the first fan that grew in my collection on this orchid bloom for me in 2022. So we have graduated to being something a little bit more mature and abundant. Now roll on 2023. It cannot be this nasty coming up in spring. It's got to be a better spring. Otherwise, at least I know that this orchid can bloom despite adverse light conditions and that makes me happy, excited and relieved. You have no idea how relieved I am. Imagine this cute little basket full of multiple spikes all in one go. I am looking forward to that. I almost had the timing that the spike on the new fan actually was in bloom while the first spike on the main fan was still in bloom. Yeah, they didn't quite synchronize that way. Maybe next year. What I want to also point out on this dedication is the architecture of the Neo Stylus Lusneri Spike. There is so much going on with these blooms, with their petals going out sideways, they have a spur because of the falcata, and yet the architecture of the spike and how they present themselves 360 degrees, not all facing the light, but they will grow in that beautiful circular shape going all the way to the top, to the final buds at the top. I find that structure so amazing. I find it interesting because with all the busyness going on with the blooms and their details, there is room for every single bloom to bloom out, spread out, not crowding each other and present themselves beautifully. Do that with a cattleya or a cattleyantha with lots and lots of blooms and sometimes you run into interferences where a petal isn't showing correctly or the sepal is tucked up behind somewhere or the sepal at the top is bent down because the other bloom on the top is weighing down. You don't have to be wiring anything for a Neostylus Lusneri to look and present itself beautifully. The wires that you see there are not for the spike, they are there for the hanger. <laughs> But I love the symmetry and the architecture of a Neo Stylus bloom. I have never really talked about it in other dedications and I thought, well, this time I have to point that out because it fascinates me how the structures manage to find space for every single bloom to come out just perfect. And on top of that, you know, we always say face the spike towards the light so that the bloom presentation is optimal. You don't need to do that with the Neo Stylus. The light always comes from one side and yet I can walk around this basket and see every bloom on the backside as well. It's just amazing. Love me this orchid. So relieved that she managed to pull through and perform the way she did in 2022. Totally unexpected because both parents love their light, especially in spring when it is grow time for them. Anyway, after all that gushing, let me just say thank you one more time to Liris Robles, Kit Rivers, 
Sanatorium Asylum, Jeff Reimers, Roby Robinson, Sharmista Mukherjee for your support on my channel. I'm so happy to be able to dedicate the third spike of this basket, <laughs> Neo Stylus Lusneri, to you. Thank you for everything. It's so very much appreciated. Every time this orchid is in bloom, I feel a certain kind of way, and that is hungry. <laughs> I'll tell you why just now, but first of all, I've got four blooms back on my Aliciara Peggy Ruth Carpenter Morning Joy, and I dedicate them to PDT S Ndruru and the Wanderer 4K to say thank you to you so much for your support on my channel. So now let's go back to why I feel a certain kind of way every time this orchid blooms. <laughs> because she smells like pepper, freshly cracked pepper. I know, right? So many different smells in the orchid hobby and freshly cracked pepper would not be one of them that I would have anticipated. <laughs> but she is beautiful. And you know, I am a kind of a person that I like a spicy dessert, if that makes sense. I like sweet things and then add a hint of chili, crack some pepper over a strawberry and raspberry coolie, something like that. I do enjoy that. So currently my blooming alley is a little bit exploding, <laughs> at least at the timing when this clip was filmed. So I've got all the sweet scents and fragrances topped off by a crack of pepper. Thanks to my Peggy Ruth Carpenter and I cannot tell you how hungry it makes me. <laughs> I've been looking into the pantry to see if I could find something that sort of, you know, will take the edge off. But instead of finding something that takes the edge off, I go back to the blooming alley to take the edge off. Oh, it's delicious over there for the time being. But this orchid had a massive divide and conquer kind of thing going on in the last year since we've really had another look at her. So I divided her and she conquered the stress. There's about 30% of the orchid left and everybody else I hope is enjoying their Peggy Ruth Carpenter blooms from the patio of Ninja Orchids. Let me know how your divisions are doing. Anyway, this spike is not going to stay on for very long, even though it is very strong, it is fine. But considering that she had this massive division taken out of her, I will be cutting this spike very, very shortly to conserve her energy, which she is going to need when we head into winter and spring of 22-23. Her pseudobulbs are already showing a little bit of shriveling. That to me is not normal. She's got new roots growing into the pot, so I would rather have her focus her energy into growing those roots. But wow, while she's around, I'm really enjoying the size of the blooms and the fact that they're coloring up nicely with some of the anthocyanin as a result of high light. She is kind of a no-fuss orchid for me. She lives on the shelf, eventually she blooms, but I don't give her enough credit because when she blooms and she does this, it's just astounding. These are quite large blooms to top it off as well. They're big. I mean, that's not too shabby for a bloom on an intergeneric hybrid. I think it's marvelous. Aliciara now being its own genus, but still, there's so much going on in this orchid. And I feel that the hybridizer has got it right. What I never noticed before, and you know, this is why I document my blooms year in, year out. You would think, yeah, I've got a picture of a certain orchid in bloom. She blooms again. Woohoo! Enjoy, film, dedicate. No, I take pictures year in, year out, just because, ah, an orchid is in bloom, pictures. But what I've noticed for the first time this year is the staining of the Bordeaux leaking onto the column. I've never noticed that before. It always came out white for me along the length of the column, but now the color is actually enhanced and bleeding into it. That to me is super fascinating. The first time I saw it, I actually thought, oh dang, it's rotting out, but nope, very, very pretty. She's super vigorous. In the past, I had seven to eight spikes on her before she was divided. So if you're considering this orchid in your collection, know that with every single growth that she grows, she will produce at least one spike. And then if she's a happy camper and left alone to grow and get big, you will have like seven to eight spikes eventually. And then just a heads up, if you get the sneezies when you smell fresh pepper, this can happen with this orchid when she has that many blooms going at one time because her fragrance will permeate into the space. It's not a very weak fragrance. It's not an unpleasant fragrance to me. 
But if you triple or quadruple the amount of blooms, then know that it smells like cracked pepper in your space. And you will not be guessing as to who is playing around. <laughs> so thank you very, very much once again to PDTS Ndruru and the Wanderer 4K. My Peggy Ruth Carpenter that I would love to rename Ruth Chris Steakhouse, <clears throat> one of my favorites, but it's not up to me to rename her, but she reminds me of the Steakhouse. So Peggy Ruth Carpenter, she blooms for you. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I sound so greedy, but I do appreciate a like and maybe a share if you find this a little bit of a novel kind of way of going about thanking everybody that supports the channel. Share it around and maybe others would want to join in and hopefully get a bloom to their name as well. Either way, let me just say once more, thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel, for watching. And if you did leave me a comment, thank you in advance before I get to reply to you for leaving a comment. I appreciate every single thing all of you do for my channel. Thank you so, so much. Wishing you a beautiful day. On that one condition, as always though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.